In this video, we're going to look at how to create any kind of speech bubble that you can dream of inside of InDesign. Normally, you can do this stuff kind of in the Illustrator or Photoshop, but we're going to look at how we can do the exact same thing in InDesign. Any speech bubble you can dream of, you can pretty much make it in InDesign. We're going to only going to be using a few tools here. We're going to be using the Direct Select tool over here. You can see that up here. Well, here's the Direct Select tool, this one. And that's when you have a uh, shape and you want to select the control points on it and then we have here the selection tool and that's when you're selecting full objects the other tool we're going to end up using is possibly this line tool we're definitely going to be using the pen tool the pencil tool and we're also going to be using the ellipse and the rectangle tool and that's pretty much all we'll need and we'll just adjust those so let's look at the first speech bubble we're going to learn how to do and for the tools that I show you the techniques I show you can be used to make any speech bubble so uh, I'm not going to show you every single speech bubble known to mankind, but I will show you how to make a series, a, a few different kinds of speech bubbles, dramatically different, so that way you can see how um, you can use it in your own project. If you're not familiar with InDesign, this is InDesign. Here's the interface. All the up at the top is where you have all your parameters for whatever you have selected. But this video is assuming that you know a little bit about InDesign. This is not an intro necessarily to InDesign, so I'm not going to go over the standard simple things that you would have to know um, in an introduction to InDesign. So let's go ahead and hop into it. First, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and select the Ellipse tool over here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag out the Ellipse like that. The second thing I'm going to do is I am going to now give this Ellipse some... Make sure that's black for the book border and then I'm going to change the size of the border to something like 5 should be good. So now that I have that is we'll go ahead and create the the little indicator of who's speaking and the way we're going to do that was going to select the pen tool over here and I'm just going to hit one point on the inside select it once and I'm going to select somewhere down here so let's say right there and then I'm going to go back up here and press that something like that. And so we're going to mask this out in a particular way. But for right now, let's go ahead and give this the same dimensions, or the, let's give the border the same dimensions as the, uh, the bubble itself. So I'm going to go up here while it's still selected, and I'm going to change that to, I believe I had it to 5. Good. Now I need to put something on top of that. And basically, I'm just going to put this bubble that I have here on top of this bubble so it looks like it's not protruding so much. Uh, so in order to do that, I first need to take this little V right here and give it a white background. Here, you'll see what I mean by this. If I were to select this right here and if I were to drag this over, you see how when it's on the gray, you can see there's no background there. So basically what I want to be able to do is give this a paper background. And if I drag this one over here, you'll see that that also does not have a paper background till I drag it. So basically what I want to be able to do, because I know this will be used for print, so I just want to make it look like it's one drawing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, um, this ellipse, and I am going to duplicate this by hitting Control-C first, hitting Control-C, and then I'm going here while it's selected, and I'm going to say Paste in Place. And what you notice is that it pastes on top of everything. And now what I need to do is go ahead and get rid of the border for that. And now all I see is that previous border. And you'll notice that, that pre the border that was in the first ellipse is smaller now because that ellipse is on top. Well, what I need to do here is go here to the layers. And I'm going to select that ellipse on the bottom. And I'm not going to change the size of the, the border. But what I will do is go over here to strokes and I am going to change the type of stroke that is and I'm going to align that stroke to the outside. <clears throat> so now it overrides the, this, the ellipse on the inside. So th this is my first um, speech bubble that I created. And I have this component here that I'm, a, I'm able to use on a lot of other speech bubbles. So before I move on to the next speech bubble, I'm going to duplicate this by holding down the Alt key and dragging one of those to the side so I can use that later. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this here. <clears throat> and I am going to duplicate this. I mean, I'm going to group it by hitting Control-G. So now I have myself a speech bubble. And that's how you can make a standard speech bubble. Now, I can take the speech bubble and do a lot of different things. So let's say I took the speech bubble. I am going to duplicate this speech bubble, drag it down. 
and then I'm going to change the stroke here. So I can go here and change the stroke to something like wavy. As you can see, I got a different speech bubble there. And then I can do the same thing over here. I'm going to take that speech bubble and I'm going to change this to dashed line. I can also double click and go inside of here and change this stroke here. The properties of this stroke here can make this look dramatically different. So by selecting that, um, I can go ahead and change the stroke over here of that by itself. Or I can go over here and change the angle by doing something like, let's say, like bevel. And as you can see, I have a beveled end on that now. And so I have something that looks a little bit different here. I just need to make sure that when I select it, I select the entire group. I can shrink that very easily, shrinking the entire group by dragging the edge once I grouped it. So you see I have three different looking you know, speech bubbles here, but let's get a little bit more dramatic than this. How about we make one of those speech bubbles where it's a double bubble, where there's a bubble on top and a bubble on the bottom. So let's say something like this. If I were to take this speech bubble, I am going to go and make myself, and I'm, I, and I'm going to do this from scratch again. I could copy this one and make the other one, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select another ellipse. That's going to be the one that's on top. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a, I think it was at five, yeah. And then I'm going to put another one on top of this and then make sure, first I got to make sure this is selected. I'm going to go ahead and select this selection tool select that and then make sure it has a paper filling there we go and now what I need to do is get rid of this portion so it looks like it's all in one so the way I'm gonna do that's a little bit different I could actually go up in here and select something like this and now I'm gonna go ahead and use my direct select tool and I'm selecting on the edge here or oh, I could select the edges here the, the control points so I can select the control points and then I'm just going to pull it. And as you can see, I'm adjusting this to where it looks like these two are connected in a way. There we go. And the last thing I want to do to this, um, go back to the regular select tool, is I want to get rid of any borders. So I go ahead and click that all the way down to there's no borders. And now I have my double bubble speech icon there and then I'm gonna highlight everything and I'm gonna hit control G to group that and there you have it let me pull it out here so you can see this is how it would print you won't see this line this line is just for you to know that that's there um, and when you go to the layers here yeah uh, in that group see that's that's just what's covering it up as you can see here and what I would recommend is you naming these as this is going to be um, a mask so you can name that as a mask you can uh, rename that so uh, that's the double speech bubble and you can even do something like this obviously you can take this I'm going to duplicate this because I'm going to use it later and I'm going to rotate this So if you had somebody on one side or the other, and then I'm going to go ahead and put this back on top. There's a couple of ways I can do this. I can right click on this, I can go to arrange, and I can bring to the front like that. Or what I can do is if I if this was behind, I could do this. I can cut it, and when you paste it back again, it's always going to paste on front. So that's just another way to do the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now take this one right here and I'm going to use this direct select tool and I can go ahead and take these control points and I can push them right on that line. So now I have my double speech bubble. And the cool thing about this is if I were to go into this group and I'm double clicking inside this group till I get to the point that I want. I can actually move this around as you can see. And that's the advantage of having that um that mask back there. So
So you can move that around and you have whatever kind of speech bubble you want dealing with this. And again, we can have this selected and we can change the type of uh, border that we have. But let's look at something more extreme than this. So if I were to have one of those bubbles that's like a crazy explosion bubble, you know how there's some sort of action or something like that going on. Let's look at how we can do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and highlight this right here. And I'm going to go ahead and make myself a rectangle. Now with that rectangle selected, I'm going to go ahead and expand the borders by giving it maybe something like a uh, a 3 is fine. Now here's the cool part about this. I already have the structure. This is going to be my, my text bubble or my text box. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead over here and use the pencil tool. And then I'm going to draw out um, the explosion. The, you know how it looks like uh, there's been some, been some kind of explosion happening in the speech itself. With the pen tool selected, go on the edge of this box. And once I hit that edge, I can go ahead and drag things out. Edge. So I'm going to go something like this. And look what happens to the box. The box takes the form of what I was drawing. So I'm going to do it again. While this is selected, I have the pen tool already selected over here and my box is uh, currently selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the edge of that and I am going to push that out. Uh, hit the edge. So here. There we go. Like that. And then I can do the same thing over here. Something like this. You just have to make sure that when you're done, you end up on that edge. And I'm doing it a little bit at a time just so you can see how it works. Normally what you can do is just go through the entire thing and do this. So now you have one of those, one of those um, explosion sort of, uh, you know, speech bubbles. Um, the other kind of speech bubble is more clean than this, but the uh, it, it's still like a a thought, let's say. And so, in order to do something like that, let me move this one out of the way. What I want to be able to do is we're going to use now, we're going to use uh, all the tools combined. We're going to go here and we're going to use the ellipse tool. And I'm just going to take the ellipse tool all the way across, something like this. I'm going to make one of those. And then I am going to go ahead and give it like a three. And then from there, I'm going to make another ellipse tool all the way around. Different sizes. All right, there we go. Now with all, I'm going to select everything here, and I'm going to give everything the same size uh, border. Make them all three. Now I'm going to highlight all of these, and I'm going to group them. Now from here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this ellipse tool. I'm going to start right here in the middle, and I'm going to press down as if I'm starting to draw it out. But I'm not going to draw it out all the way. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and the Control key. And then I'm going to hold down the shift key so that way it stays. So I'm holding out alt control shift on the PC. And I think it's alt command shift on the Mac. And so then I'm just going to drag it out from the center. And then from there, now I go ahead and use my pen tool. And on the border of this, I want to first make sure <coughs> that I'm on this is selected. Now I'm just going to go ahead on the border of this and start drawing from this border. Hold on. that. Okay. And I just want to make sure these lines that I have here. And 
then once that's done I am going to select here make sure that's paper and I want no border there now basically you see what I have here except for these lines here I gotta get rid of those lines but you see basically what I have here is this little sort of cloud bubble here and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select the the ellipse tool I'm going down here I'm going to increase the size of my um, my border make sure my border is black use the select tool bring that up close and then create another one that's even smaller like this and you would say, wow, this looks way cleaner, but I'm not done with these. I'm going to select this, shift select that. Then I'm going to go over here and I am going to change this to a different wavy type. And then I can expand that just a little bit to make it look a little off. And so there you have it. So now we have that little sort of uh, your thinking sort of look to it. So there you have it. You, you can pretty much make any speech bubble using this technique. Um, if you want to have a speech bubble where the direction of the person speaking looks a little different, looks a bit better than this one, then what you want to be able to do is use this pen tool and you're going to select one like you did before, select again, and then when you get here, let's say I'm going to um, I'm going to put it over here. You want to pull it a little bit. You want to slightly pull it. So if you want some angle to that, you want some arc to it. And then every uh, the technique from here is basically the same. So first, I'm going to go ahead and increase that to 4. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to increase it to 4. And then I am while it's selected, I'm going to the stroke. I'm going to push this align stroke to the outside. And then I'm going to edit and paste in place because I just now copied it. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to arrange and bring that to the front. And with that being in the front, I am now going to get rid of this. There we go. And the one under that I missed. Let me, uh, this one right here. This one I missed. I was um, supposed to bring this border change the border style there and there we have it so I have now a speech um, you know indicator that goes a little bit longer and I can alter this by dragging this out as you can see and then adjusting this putting it right back behind I can actually rotate this and I can actually change, take all of this, I'm gonna group it. So from here, what I can do is I can have this group here and I can actually change the outline of this. Make it wavy, just like what we did before. I can change that to dash, the thickness, and I can also do anything that's here, basically. And there you have it. We've made a lot of different speech bubbles. And if you look here at the type of speech bubbles we made, I may have some here that we didn't do in this video, but you get the idea. So we have all these speech bubbles here that you're able to use, and then you save these speech bubbles and use them in your comic book when you're gonna print out or your anime or whatever. You see this one here, that was kind of the same one that we did before. Here's the, the thought process one and the double speech bubble, and so on and so forth. So there you have it. You can make any speech bubble inside of InDesign with very few tools uh, needed to, to make this happen. Uh, but it'll also make your anime or your images uh, pop and look a lot better and more professional. All right. So I'll see you guys next time.